You're tuned into the Blues Heart Biker Channel here on YouTube. Stick around, check it out. We're going to have a blast today. All right, well, here we are with the buddy Eric here. Say hey, Eric. You guys saw Eric um, and his son. What was your name again? I'm sorry. Uh, Jared. Jared, okay. Yeah, that's his son, Jared. I'm a little bit Fabricator Ray. Remember. That's Ray over there. Oh, Say hey to Ray. Ray. Ray's working, so he ain't got time to fool around with us. We're not going to bother Ray any. And uh, uh, Eric uh, is part of Milner's racing team yeah, at yeah. Ray's Automotive yeah. there. American Graffiti. They, I, whether they're going to know that. You got to have American. You know, they, they had a race between Bob Falfa and John Milner. Out on Paradise Road. You know that in that movie, right? Yep, absolutely. And if you follow the directions that they say, you know, when when Ron Howard asks, um, when Ron Howard asks, where's the race at? And the guy says, you know, you take J Street out to Vernalis, right? If you follow those directions, which it's different now because they changed the name of the street to 132, it's a 132 highway, you'll go to Paradise Road. Really? Yes. That I did Paradise know. Road is there, and if you drive down that Paradise Road, it looks just like it. Really? It's, in fact, I think they probably filmed it there at Paradise, out, out by Modesto. Yeah. 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 Anyways, this is Eric. He, uh, he had the old uh, 1937 Plymouth the other day. A few episodes back, you saw it, and we've been buddies for a long time from the music thing. And um, he's got all kinds of stuff here, and what we particularly came out to see was this aerial square four. And there it is in all of its glory. One of the, uh, the most unique British motorcycles, or the unique, most unique motorcycles ever built, really. You know, 1,000cc um, square uh, four cylinder motor. And this is probably from the, what, what year do you think this, this is? This is 1954. 1954, and they made these up into the 60s like this. These, um, uh, and, uh, you said now, let's tell, hear the story about this. You said this is your aunt's bike. It was my aunt's bike. She gave it to me. So she rode it all the way up to 1973 when they parked it. That's why it's got the solo seat on it. Um, and it was lowered down so she could sit on it and touch the ground. Uh, but she rode it. She wanted a pink bike. So they painted it this Plymouth color. Uh, this is a 50s Plymouth pink. And uh, I mean, that's... That's it. It's got pretty low miles. It's got a it's got a kiss here. Her son was uh, lifting weights one day and dropped the barbell on it and yeah. dented it. So I mean, I can tell you everything about the the nuance of the bike. Yeah. Um, it's still got the six volt battery in it. It's, it's got uh, pretty low miles on it. Um, Sixteen thousand miles. Yep. Wow. And then the old Smith's uh, um, speedometer. The speedometers go backwards yep. on this thing. Yep. Wow. But they, she rode this, you know, they had a bunch of aerials and uh, yeah. this was her bike and she cruised it. Her nickname was Tootsie, so the bike's name is Tootsie. That looks like a Tootsie bike right there, man. Yeah. Tell you what, and it's all here. It's 100% complete. I think the only thing that I'm missing toolbox? is the air breather. Yeah. Yeah, the toolbox is there. And... Yeah, they got, you can find that air breather, I'm sure. Yeah. They got the aerial club. Yeah. Man, now this is really something. You bet one little carburetor. One little carburetor um, feeds that whole motor. Yeah, so they parked it, they pulled it into the container, and that's where it sat for the next wow. almost 50 years. So this thing's a survivor, man. You know, if you ever got this running, you should do nothing to it at all. I'm not. Yeah. Um, you know, I've heard different things about people telling me get it running. They say that there's a valley down here that uh, they get sludge, so they they say to take these covers off and clean all that out. Yeah. My uncle's old school. He says put fuel and spark plugs in it and kick it over and fire it. Yeah. I don't know. I, you know, you hear these different yeah. things, so um, who knows? I mean, the oil looks good in it and stuff. Yeah. Um, I kind of goofed it up. I was running it without the plugs and stuff, so I locked up the uh, the kickstart on it. But 
the guy, I talked to an aerial guy at the Selma swap meet and he said, yeah, that's normal for these transmissions. He said, you can rock them back and forth and sit there and kick it and it'll, 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 it'll free up. Free itself up. But I know it had compression and everything. It was, I mean, really all I had to do was put a battery in it and put fuel in it and yeah. I think it would have fired. Yeah. Um, so. Now that is an amazing, amazing thing you got here, man. It's a cool bike. Yeah, that is. It's just got the right stance on it. I mean, it just yeah. sit on it so you can film somebody sitting on it. Oh, yeah. It's just got, you know, it just feels right. It yeah. looks. Yeah, these it's are great cool, bikes, it's man. It's a cool bike. You know, Buddy Holly had an aerial. Yes, a 1958 Cyclone. Mm -hmm. Very rare model. Very I rare model. That. I went to, uh, I went to the Buddy Holly Museum in Lubbock. Denise and I drove I, over there. I saw. I went there too. So we, the, we, the motorcycle belonged to Waylon Jennings for a while yes, too. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. matter of fact, the Crickets gave it to him. They bought it. And they, yeah. And they gave it to him for his birthday, and it yeah. sat in his living room. Yeah. Yeah. Until he died. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And that's a very rare rare model yeah because it was kind of like a triumph it was yeah. a two-cylinder you know the story of that bike yeah yeah so they, he, they went down to buy harley's to buy harley's and yeah. harley's blew them off so yeah they ended up going in and he bought the aerial and then and i think the crickets bought uh, triumphs. triumphs the lady the lady that owned the wife of the owner of the shop had seen him on tv and recognized yeah. him yep so yep. they went and they bought the bikes and they went to harley and they did burnouts in the parking lot and took off yeah and they yeah. rode the, the bikes back to lubbock yep yeah. very cool yeah that, uh, yeah I saw that too I went to the museum in Lubbock and I was yeah. on the road a couple years yeah. ago yeah this is just really really something the fenders look at these are those old old fenders it's just a cool bike I love yeah. it with the solo seat I mean yeah you know, yeah a lot of the uh -huh. purists will look at it and go well that seat's not right but it just looks so you cool. know what you have to leave it like this because oh, yeah. This was customized in the 60s, yes. you know, or yes. whenever, maybe it even. A, it was the 60s. Yeah, yeah, this was customized, and there's, you know, there's something to that nowadays, you know, bikes that were customized and and, and then left alone, you yeah. know. And, uh, yeah. man, I would just get this thing running. I wouldn't do anything to it. No, it just looks cool. It's just the cool it the way it is, yeah. Everybody yeah. can have a restored bike. Yeah. Very few people can have... A bike that looks like this that hasn't been touched. Yeah. A car. I mean, if you look yeah. at the cars they have, they're not touched. Yeah. Because I just I think that they're just they look better this way. Anybody yeah. can put a new paint job on a car, but to get a bike or a car with with paint like this, and, yeah. You know, metal like yeah. this, it just it just looks. It's got character. Yeah. And it's got a story behind it. Yeah. Could even be worth more, like this if it was all redone like in good you know running mechanical order yeah. could be worth more like this than if you restored it completely right you know or 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 as much when you go dollar for dollar what it would take you to right you know to what it would take to bring it back to original yeah. and it'll never be original no. but this is like a 60s restore and you know man that is really cool man so a cool thing about my uncle he you know he liked aerials obviously so he had a he had a bagger that was a 57 and uh, he actually did funeral processions in that uh -huh. and he would tell me stories of how he would take two intersections as opposed to his partner who was riding a Harley because the bike was so much faster and torquier yeah he could get up and take two intersections to the one that the Harley could take because it yeah. was just a better bike yeah but he had that bike and then he had a um, he had a red hunter yeah. um, he had quite a few aerials um, so and there was wow, man, oh man. Well, that is really cool. That is really cool. You had a cool aunt. I hope it's everything you, you, you it, hoped it, it would be. It is, it is. It really is, you know. I'm going to take it to my buddy in uh, San Miguel. You would like this guy because he, Neil McNeil. Neil McNeil. He was the first okay. guy to take a Honda and chop it in the 70s and oh, make wow. a chopper out of it. Oh, wow. He was the Jesse James of the 70s. Oh, okay. Um, 
and a lot of people think that he's dead, and he's not. He's. I, does, but does he want people to know he's dead? No. Oh, he doesn't, okay. He doesn't care. Oh, okay. Um, I know there's sometimes people, no, you know, want to be on the radar. And he'll tell you he never he never played up his image the yeah. way that he should have. I mean, he lived next to like. Uh, uh, Sam Barris and all those right, guys, right, you know, yeah. hung out with all those, hung out with Von Dutch and yeah. uh, lived next to uh, Red Fox yeah. in Toluca Lake, I think is okay. where it was. But uh, anyways, he was the first guy to take that Honda and the 750 and he chopped it and stretched it. And he actually had a business called Savior um, Motorcycle Suspension and it was, he called it Savior because it was Savior ass because right. it actually had a suspension in there. Um, but he designed all of that. The guy is super cool. Matter of fact, he's got a, um, he lives over in San Miguel. He's got one of the bikes that he built. He just picked it back up and it's a uh, trike. Um, that's uh, just totally bitching. But, wow. but this guy, look up Savior, um, Savior Suspension, Amen Motorcycle Company. Uh -huh. And you'll see the history on Neil McNeil. And and uh, that's a guy I need to take you over to. Yeah, to I'd like to meet him. Yeah, yeah. Well, when pretty, you take this over, let me know. He's pretty trick because he's got, uh, you know, he builds toys and and stuff now, and he just. But he's a motorcycle guy. You yeah. Dig him. Yeah. So get this, and you're gonna take this over to him, see I'm if you get it take running. Take it over to him, because he said he'd get it running for me. So. Yeah. So I'm gonna take it over there to San Miguel and uh, let him work on it and get it fired up for me. Yeah. Oh man, it's light too. Oh yeah. You look good on it, John. Yeah, man. <laughs> let's get a let's get a front a front shot here. There we go. Yeah, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> you get used to it, that right hand shift. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, man, that's really something. That's a heck of a bike, man. She's a beauty. She's a beauty. Wow. You like to ride that thing? I'd love to. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Man, that's awesome, man. <laughs> So what else are you working on here? So uh, it's like you got quite a few projects going got, on. We got lots of projects. So we are uh, we're members of the Legends of Kearney Bowl. So these cars ran at Kearney Bowl back in the '60s. Yeah. Um, this car was Benny Barnes's original car. Last ran at Kearney Bowl in '67. Um, that car, the '97 car, was actually the '88 back in the day, but it ran at Kearney Bowl as a rental ride. So if you needed to rent a car, you could rent that car and take mm. it around the track. Oh wow. The 61 is the car that has the most prominence. It, it ran at uh, Kearney Bowl. Did it run at Clovis? Yeah, it ran, it ran Clovis and, and San Jose too, didn't it? Yeah. Um, Howard Kading drove this car and uh, Jorgensen uh, owned it, Al yeah. Jorgensen. He could probably tell you more. Ray could probably tell you more about all that stuff. Because Ray's, Ray's a real race car driver. I'm just a, I'm just a. Poser. You ever go to Kearney Bowl? Yeah, when I was. Yeah. Started going there when I was five years old. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember it. I lived out there. 
Yeah. And I never went because they, you know, they tore it down. Yeah. But I could hear it from my house yeah. uh, on the weekends. I could hear, <laughs> and they tore it down before, um, before I was, you know, before we ever went. Because um, we moved out there, and uh, but I never went. I saw it. I saw it out there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. Did you ever see it? I didn't see yeah, it. I'm I, too, I'm you're too young. young. You're not old. <laughs> you're not mature like us, right? <laughs> I never went to it, but I saw it. I saw it, and it was out on Kearney Boulevard. Yep. <clears throat> so this car, well, these cars, these three ran out there. Yeah. That one we're building. That that car runs. So we're called Legends yeah. of Kearney Bull. So we run Madeira. Um, we just ran Tulare last uh, last Saturday. We'll run Hanford. We'll run up in Stockton. This is Carrie. Nancy's gonna so, be pissed off that she didn't feed hey. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie's the uh, the other one that's a member of the Kearney Bull group. Uh -huh. um, and uh, so. Bill, what are you doing here? Carrie's got an 80. Up, He's got the 80 car and the 78 car. Ray's got the 45 car. Um, there's a lot of history right here. Man, yeah, man, it sure and then, is. Uh, sure up is. on the rafters, there's a 33 Essex Terraplane. So that was built by Hudson. That's a pretty rare car. Yeah. Uh, we took that to Vegas. Yeah, wow. So we, drove, we trailered it over there and drove it around in, in Vegas. Um, and this this car, going back to 61, so when I bought it, there's a truck out here in the yard that's a 1950 Chevy. I think it's a 51 uh, Chevy flatbed that this car ran on. They would tow it to the to the uh, racetrack back in the day. And I've got pictures of this car on that truck at like Kearney Bowl. Yeah, yeah. So the Vukovic's used to drive out there. Vukovic's used Kearney to drive out, out of Kearney Bowl. Uh, Blackie Jajian Blackie used to take care of the Clovis Speedway, uh -huh. and he would he would have a water truck that he'd water down the track, and yeah. he'd hang his arm out because it didn't have a door yeah. so he would hang his arm and drive that thing around the track and slide it around the track and uh, there's a there's a lot of history with this group. In case you guys don't know about Kearney Bowl it was a racetrack out um, on Kearney Boulevard now if any of you guys have ever watched some of my videos I've ridden up and down Kearney Boulevard many times it's a street with all the palm trees if you haven't seen it go back and take a look you'll see some of my videos but Kearney Bowl uh, Google it. It's a, it was a very famous racetrack, and it was um, when I was a little kid they tore it down. But like I said, I remember hearing it long, and then we'd drive down Kearney Boulevard and we'd see the track out there. A lot of but, people uh, don't know that they ran Clovis Speedway. I mean, Clovis the rodeo yeah. grounds was a, it was a was speedway. A, yeah, was yeah. Speedway. yeah. So these guys would race. Uh, Kearney Bowl on Friday, then they would drive to San Jose and race on Saturday, and then they would race Clovis on Sundays. So yeah, wow. Um, and they made that circuit every week. You'd have Al, Al Pombo and yeah. and Marshall Sargent and, yeah. and uh, Hutton and all those guys, and, uh, Everett, so uh, Everett Edlin, so, and Everett still runs with us. Everett will get in the car and drive still. So, wow. And he's 80 some odd years old. Wow. So, oh, this is the 57. Sunliner. Oh. Wow, look at that. That is nice. That is really nice. This is the same color as my Edsel. I love this color. Petal yellow. Yep. This is I don't know whether that's what they call it in Ford, but Edsel is petal Ford, yellow. Ford, Ford called it Inca gold uh -huh. and colonial white. Okay. Uh, it's got the 312 Thunder Group Special okay. motor in it. Um, the Y block? The Y block. So does it make ticking noise like a typewriter? This one's not as bad as some of the other Y blocks yeah. that I have. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they all they, they all, all make tick that a little, little, little bit. Tick. Yeah. That's how you know they're alive. Yeah. Um, I'm actually having a, a Y block built for the next race car that we're putting together. Yeah. Um, we've got a Ford Vicky body out here that we're going to put oh, together yeah. and we're going to put a Y block in it. Everybody runs Chevy. So, we're so the Y block, 225, 270, 272, 292, uh, 312. 312. And wasn't there a 330? 
That was considered an FE block, the uh -huh. 331. 331, yeah. I got a 59 Ford back there with a 331. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know I got the uh, 289. 289, 283. 280. In your Edsel? In my Edsel. It would have been. It's a 280, or 290, 292. 292. 292, excuse me. It could have been a 292. Yeah, yeah. I, I, know, I know exactly what it is. I just yeah. couldn't remember. I got my twos mixed up. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. It's a, uh, well, we need it's a 308. It's the big motor. Uh -huh. um, it's a true Hornet. Is so it a V8 or a straight eight? Straight eight. Or this is a straight six. Straight six. Yeah. So it's a straight six with a 308 in it. Um, and uh, this was what they ran in NASCAR back in the 50s. This car won NASCAR in like 50, I think it was 51 through 54. Oh, wow. Um, it was beating overhead valve V8s. Wow. Uh, Oldsmobile and whatnot. This car was smoking them. Wow. This is the first car that they called a step a step down. So this is the first car that didn't have just a flat floor. This is the first car that you actually stepped down into. Oh, wow. If you look at any other car in the 50s, they're all flat. Yeah. Um, they didn't really have a transmission tunnel and stuff. This car is unique because it's got the step down design. So it actually set the body down and it set the, the center of gravity down. 48 was the first body style that they, when they switched the bodies. Yeah. And they came out with this body style. In 49, Mercury, switched theirs and copied Hudson. Ah. Everybody thinks that Hudson, uh, Ford was the innovator of all these different things. And uh, Ford they just, came up with their design after Hudson. They just robbed it from Hudson. Yeah, Yeah, because a 48 Merc looks a lot different than a 49. Yeah. And it's just like the, uh, you know, Look just at like the, steering the, the wheel. Hudson. The, well, the Hudson that I have inside, it had suicide doors. Everybody thinks that Ford was the first car with suicide doors, and it wasn't. It was Hudson. Wow, look at this. The steering wheel is really oh, friggin' nice. Thing. You got another one of these? Mm-hmm. Really? I can, brought, we, uh, can we look at it? Yeah. Uh, actually, no, I don't have it here. Oh, okay. The, the one inside, the black one, uh -oh, that's you. an early Hudson. Um, the, the Essex? The Essex. Yeah. That's built by Hudson back in yeah. the 30s. Um, I've got a 48 two-door that's at my buddy's shop getting some work done on it. Um, so the 48 is the same body style. And then I've got a 49 four-door. Um, I think that's all the heads I have. I it's bet it's a real bitch when you got to change the tire. This thing, yeah, you've got it. <clears throat> so you've got to jack up the body and let the, the axle actually hang down. And then you can get to the... Uh, to the lug nuts and pull that thing out but it's a bitch to have to change yeah because there's th i mean it, those aren't fender skirts that's yeah, fender no that's fender you put the fender skirt on it it's down even lower so it's uh yeah but it's this thing's a beautiful car. i mean it's there's the head for it oh yeah so, that's a big old six cylinder head yeah. that was their big daddy engine so yeah. if you had a uh, if you had a 308 a 7x motor is the one that they that they um, talk about. Matter of fact, the movie Cars, mm -hmm. they actually uh, audio taped the actual 7X car that they have that's got the motor in it. Yeah. And uh, they used that motor for the soundtrack of Cars. Yeah. Because that car, I mean, when they fire that thing up, it'll make the hair on your arm stand up because it wow. sounds like a V8. It wow. sounds so wicked and it's a six cylinder. But Clifford built a lot of uh, speed parts for these cars. A car like, like this, and you see the the wear here you wonder how many arms have hung out that window yeah you know, right, driving right. and i mean you look at the stickers where they drove this thing yeah so you know you look at that stuff and you go this is cool this is all history right here yeah i mean yeah you could paint it again but what's the point yeah so and this is uh i don't think this dash is wood grain but some of them had a wood grain dash and well you, this is still Kind of got the look of the wood grain. Yeah. It's fantastic. So this is a 37 Graham built by the Graham brothers. They actually worked for Dodge. 
back in the 20s. So the Graham brothers worked for the Dodge brothers, huh? They actually designed uh, motors and stuff for them. Uh, and then they split off and they started their own company. And the deal was they couldn't build trucks. So they started, they bought the Page Company when it was going out of business. And they bought, they started building cars. And then in the 30s, they dropped the Page name and just became Graham Brothers. But this is a factory wow. supercharged engine. And the Grahams made this supercharger? The Grahams made this. So, interesting thing in 36, Graham was going through and restructuring their company. And so they, uh, they struck up a deal with REO and they bought REO bodies. So from the firewall back, this is an REO flying cloud. Okay. Then they changed the, the really just the grill. So the, the REO had a flat grill, kind of like a LaSalle. Right. And then they came out with this waterfall design and then they put the supercharger in it. So for 92 more dollars, you could buy a Gram as opposed to an REO. Wow. But if you ever see an REO, it's the same car from the firewall back. Yeah. So. Yeah, Graham didn't. Uh, Graham didn't fare as well as REO. REO had all them hits in the 80s. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah, what year is this now? 30, this is a 37. 37. 37 were the same. Wow. And. Oh man, oh man. Wow. She'll probably fire up if you want me to. Really? I think so. Yeah, let's let me, fire it let me up. Grab the key. I mean, last, last year. Oh, wow. There it goes. That thing's cool, man. Yes, so how much difference do you think that supercharger really makes and like how fast it goes or? I think they said it gave it like 60 more horsepower. Really? It wasn't, yeah. I don't think it was significant. It was more for looks. Yeah. Now, in 35, they were running like Indian stuff because they had what they called a banjo. I think it was called a banjo. Um, it was an X-frame and their frames were stronger so they were running those in uh in um indy yeah but you know graham was just they were far advanced and uh well all right eric thank you man yeah. thanks a lot for showing me this stuff uh i came out here to see the aerial and uh what i ended up with was a whole lot more cool stuff so um thanks a lot man and uh when are you racing again uh, we're going to race in two weeks in Madeira. Okay, so anybody in the valley, go in two weeks, go to the Madeira Speedway and see these guys, the um, Legends of Kearney Bowl. Yep. And uh, if you don't know what Kearney Bowl is, Google it. And you'll find out a lot of history about the area where we live. Exactly. And uh, so, all right, man. Well, thanks a lot for showing me this and all the cars and everything, man. I had a great time, Dan. So, so all right, man. We're gonna get that Edsel running. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. All right. <laughs>